Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Tyler here, and today I want to go over IPC communication with Electron. So today we're going to be covering um, a few methods for communicating over IPC. We're going to be covering the invoke uh, for IPC render, the send, the send sync, and also how to handle these events uh, multiple times, one time, all that kind of stuff. And we're going to show what's the best one to use for your situation. So let's get started. Um, so right now, I have a very, very, very basic Svelte application. It's a single page uh, application. If you haven't used Svelte before, that's totally okay, totally fine. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory. Right now, we're just putting the count, the app version, and the development, which all of these um, are right here. And then we have three buttons. One of them just simply increments the um, one of them just simply increments the counts, and the other two we're going to implement right now to kind of demonstrate this. And this is what our app looks like. So let's get started. One thing we want to know with Electron is how do we send messages between processes? So right now we have the renderer process right here. And if I want to say send a message from the renderer process, how would I go about doing that? Well, in the preload scripts we have right here, we can do something like that with IPC render. So say I want to send a message from the renderer process to the main process. I could do something like this. Uh, we could just say, say, um, we'll call it greet, and we'll take in a message, which can be anything we want. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do IPC renderer dot send. And there's multiple ways to send messages. There's send, send sync, there's also invoke. And we're gonna do send because this is a pretty common way to send a message. And what we can do is we could do greet is gonna be our channel, AKA the name of the channel we're gonna listen on and the message we actually wanna send. And we're gonna pass that in like so. Now you may be wondering, okay, how do we listen to this message now? So what we can do, is in the index.js. This is on the main process now, as you can see, IPC main. We can come over here and do IPC main dot on to listen for that same channel. We called it greet. So we could do greet. And here we have access to our events and the arguments. If I now just console dot log args and we rerun this, what you'll see is if I also, let me go into the app.svelte and just simply run uh, window.greets.greets and I could say hello from the renderer. And now if I run this, what you'll see is we should get down here, hello from the renderer. So uh, we actually get an error, window.greet is not a function window.greet is not a, oh, it's API, sorry. Uh, window.api.greet, there we go. Sorry about that, okay. So we have our window.api.greet, which is going to call this greet function with our message and pass it in. And what you'll see is we get hello from the renderer in the main process now. So we're able to send messages from this process to this one. Now, what if we want to say return a value, which is very common. Say we want to make a call to the main process, do some system calls like scan the file system, something like that. And we want to return a list of files or something about the network, whatever. One thing we can do is use invoke. Um, and there's two ways of doing this. So first example, we're going to get the application version. So I'm going to create an on click listener. Again, if you haven't used Svelte, I highly recommend it. It's actually very nice, but it just is a function parameter. We're gonna pass in a function. I'm gonna call it on or uh, get version. And we have to create that function now. Const get version is equal to an asynchronous function. We'll make it. And what we can do is now, let me see. And what we can do is we can actually make that call. And again, I'm gonna create a new function on our API. And let's call this uh, gets version. Again, we're gonna use arrow functions. We're gonna do IPC renderer 
not me, renderer dots. And instead of doing sends, we're going to do invoke. And if you read this, it resolves with a response from the main process. And what you see is it returns a promise. So it returns a promise, which means we can use async await to listen for this. So the message is kind of the same thing. We had to pass in a message uh, channel. We're going to call it git slash version. And in here, we could pass in args. We don't have to. And that is that. Now inside of here, we can do const version. Actually, we can just set it directly. Version is equal to window.api dots gets version. And what you'll see is if we await this, we will now get the version. But we have to set that up in the uh, main process. So we actually have to listen for this now. And to listen for an event containing invoke, so you notice how we did invoke. To listen for that, we do handle. So handle allows us to listen for these types of events. So we can handle git slash version. And the reason we're calling it git version is because that's what we called it in our preload script. So git version, we have access to the same things. We have access to the events and the args. We're not going to use any of them, but we do have them right there. The reason I'm putting asynchronous here is because it expects a return value. For example, if I return the value of one and I rerun this function. So what we're going to do is start it up. And if we click this uh, get version, what you'll see is we will now put one in here. So we click get version and we get app version is one. And that's not very exciting, but that is what it does. It returns a value. So we're returning a value through a promise. If we don't use a wait, for example, this will not work the way we expect it to, because this is a promise. So if I run this one last time, get version, we get object promise. And that's obviously not what we want. We want to await this. Now, the reason I put async here is because say this takes a while. We're going to get the version, but say we want to say wait like uh, 10 milliseconds, you know, sleep, we'll sleep for four seconds and we're going to do await sleep four seconds. And then we're going to return app.get version. Now this is totally unnecessary, but it's to show a point that this is asynchronous. And what this means is this will not block our thread in the render process. Um, this won't. See how we can click get version and then increment stuff and it's incrementing while this is loading. And there it is. We're able to click it and increment this all at the same time. And it won't mess that up. Now, if we want to send a message synchronously, which I don't recommend, um, there's very few use cases for this. We can still do that. So we can do const down here. We'll have a is development function. So we'll call it const is dev. And this will take, in, there we go. so this const is development function, what we'll do is we'll say dev is equal to window.api.isdev. And this isn't a function that we haven't created, but let's go ahead and create that. And so this is going to be called is dev is going to be a function that does this IPC render dot send sync. Now, Send sync does exactly what it sounds. It sends a synchronous message from the renderer process to the main process, which means it blocks this process's execution. So we can do something like sync, uh, or we can just say git um, slash sync slash dev. We'll call it that. Let's wait and see. There we go. And again, we could pass in arguments. I'm not going to, but we could. Uh, what we could do now is IPC main, IPC main dot on get slash sync slash dev. Again, we have access to the same things. We have access to the events and the args. But to actually return a message, we can't simply do return, you know, something like that. Instead, we have to do event dot return value is equal to some value. For example, if I want to find out if we're in development mode, I can just return this constant up here. That is is dev. 
And what you can see is this will return if we're in development mode. So I'm going to restart the server and go into our app. And what I want to do is when we click this is dev button, I want to run these is dev function right here. And sadly, I do have to restart since I didn't plan that. There we go. So yeah, we're going to click this is dev function. And what it'll do is it'll synchronously get if we're in development mode. Now, it doesn't seem like it's really messing anything up. It's not like freezing the process, nothing like that. But watch what happens if this call takes a while. Like, say this isn't something so simple as just finding out the version. So what we can do to test this out and show you how long it could take is I'm just going to do a set timeout. We're going to do it for five seconds. I'm going to do it for four. And we'll do event.return value is equal to is dev. Now what will happen is it will not return for four seconds. And that's a problem because we're doing an asynchronous way. So if I rerun this, what you'll see is the thread will be blocked. So watch, if I click um, get version, it's going to work. See how it still says undefined while we're waiting? But it, it lets me increment the count. So watch, if it's uh, 20 right now and I click get version, I can keep clicking it and it'll work. Now. Watch what happens, we're at 41, if I click is development. Click it, see how it freezes? I'm clicking the increment button, but it's freezing my thread, and look what happens. Even though it didn't show me any feedback, it put it to 59. If I click is dev again, and I keep incrementing it, it's, it's counting it, it's just the user doesn't know. And it freezes the entire thread during that time, which is bad, obviously. So. That's why we don't use um, the synchronous functions very often. Very, very, very rarely you'll need to use that. Now, what about this get version? What if I only want this function to be called once? How can I do that using IPC? Uh, there's a couple things you could do. For example, in Svelte, I could just simply do once, which means I can only do this one time. Um, but let, let's see how we can do this using the IPC. And to do this, to demonstrate it, I'm going to console.log version was um, red over at the scene. So that we know when we're actually getting this uh, function. Okay. And inside of our index.js, what we can do is instead of IPC main.handle, we can do IPC main.handle once. And it does exactly what it sounds like. It lets you listen for the event one time. Once that's called, it'll remove this listener, which is also good because it clears up memory. So if I click get version, you can see version was read over IPC. It's still not blocking. And if I click get version again, watch what happens. Error invoking remote method. Get version, no handler is registered. Which is why that alongside not calling it again, obviously, is really useful. For example, I can now do this. There we go. Add a once flag onto that. And if I run this again, what you'll see is I can only call that one time. It'll remove it. I can keep clicking it, nothing will happen. I can increment it, nothing uh, goes wrong. And I can do the same thing with this, but it's still synchronous. So if you found this video useful, please like, comment, subscribe. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.